As we begin chapter four, we will finally be looking at why we learn all about the derivative. How can we use the first derivative? Well, before we look at the calculus, we need to look at how the calculus is going to tell us about the graphs. And so if you can look at the objectives we have, we're going to be looking at some graphs to tell us some things, and then we're going to be using the derivative to confirm what the graphs have told us. So first of all, let's just review how to find the intervals of increasing, decreasing, or constant. I believe we did this back in chapter two, but this relates to the domain, right? So if we look at a graph, you want to move from left to right, and you could pretend that you're walking along the graph and you're going to ask yourself, are you walking uphill, downhill, or just flat? And so hopefully you can see that as I start from the left-hand side, I'm walking downhill. So I want the domain for that. Now what this, these pictures are not very good indicators is that whether they go on or not. I'm going to assume that these have arrows that mean they go on forever. All right, so on number one, how far left do we go? Well, this keeps going, so that would be from negative infinity until this point of zero. And I'm going to use an open parenthesis because at the point zero, it's a turning point, so it's neither increasing or decreasing. So this would be the decreasing part because I've gone down. Right, then we can see as we go up here, we're going uphill, and so we would have it from zero to infinity would be increasing all along here, continuing to go up. Right now, look at number three. It looks like a roller coaster, and that's kind of what I think of, right? So I start from the left-hand side, and I'm going up, 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 until I get to a point here, and I need to stop. And look at what I'm stopping at, the x value of negative 1. And so increasing from negative infinity to negative 1. And then as I pick that up, I'm going down, 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 down. I stop again at the x value of positive 1. So I'm decreasing from negative 1, which is where I left off here, all the way to positive 1. And then as I pick it up, I'm increasing again. And so I'm going to add it up here from 1 to infinity. So increasing, decreasing, increasing. All right, let's look at some more. Again, going left to right. I want to remind you that this thing right here is an asymptote. It's not part of the graph. It just shows you what the graph is doing as it gets closer. And it looks like <clears throat> this is also an asymptote just looking at these graphs. And again, we're going to assume that these keep going forever, right? So as I start from the left-hand side, it looks like I'm increasing, 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 then decreasing. But as I go up here, I'm also decreasing and then increasing. So let's see if we can write that. All right, so I'm increasing where the blue is. So that was from infinity, and it looks like to negative 1. And again, I'm increasing from 1 to infinity. <clears throat> and then decreasing would be the yellow part. So from negative 1 to 0, because I'm getting closer and closer to 0, and then I pick up 0 and I go to 1. Now I cannot include that 0 because of that asymptote. <clears throat> I, I was not, the, the function is not even defined at 0. All right, let's do it one more time. So starting from the left, it looks like I'm going down, 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 down. And then I pick it up and I go up, 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 up. up. And then it looks like I go down, down, down again. All right, so again, I'm going to assume that these have arrows. 
this looks like it's an asymptote. This is going to continually go down, and that's going to continually go that way. All right, so let's see. Decreasing, that's the yellow part, from negative infinity to zero, and then from two to infinity. So all along here, down, 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 down. Increasing from zero to two, that would be that part. So no calculus, just looking at graphs, a review of what is increasing and decreasing. Now what can the derivative tell us? Well, I want you to notice that when things are increasing, the slope of the tangent line would be positive, and when the graph is decreasing, the slope of the tangent line would be negative. So now we're going to use the derivative to find where it's increasing or decreasing. So we're asked to use the derivative to find where the function is increasing or decreasing. What's our process? First of all, take the derivative and set that derivative equal to zero. And now we're going to solve for x. And let's go ahead and reduce that fraction. The next step is to put that number on a number line and then test regions. Let's back up. What does this mean equals two-thirds? That the derivative equals to zero when x is two-thirds. That means if you were to graph this, which is a parabola, that when x is two-thirds, you would have what's called a horizontal tangent, a horizontal line, a horizontal tangent at that point, and that's where your increasing and decreasing changes. So now we're going to test regions. We're going to test on either side of my critical value of two-thirds. So I'm going to take my derivative and let's test it somewhere to the left. I think zero would be an easy number to choose. Now remember, you don't really have to work it all out. You just need to know if it's negative or positive. And so to the left of two-thirds, our derivative is negative, which means it's decreasing. That means if I drew little tangent lines, they all have a decreasing or negative slope. Let's see, now I need to pick a number to the right of two-thirds. I think one looks pretty easy. And I get a positive, which means my derivative is increasing. In other words, all the little tangent lines I were to draw would have a positive slope. Now I'm ready to answer my question that it is increasing on the region from two-thirds to positive infinity. We don't ever include two-thirds because that's where the derivative equals to zero. And it's decreasing from negative infinity to two-thirds. Right, so again, let's go through the process. You take the derivative we set it equal to zero, and we solve for x. Right, I'm going to put these numbers on a number line that just helps me visualize it. Right, so this is where it equals to zero. Now I'm going to test the regions, and this time I have three regions. So I want to test a number to the right of zero. I'm going to pick one, and I need to pick a number between zero and negative two and then pick a number to the left of negative two. Now you can pick any number you want, I just try to pick the easiest ones I can. So now I'm going to evaluate the derivative at these three numbers to tell me will the derivative be negative or positive. And you really don't have to get an answer if you don't want to do all the arithmetic. If you can just see that it's negative or positive, that's great. All right, so in this region, we have positive. This region, we have negative. This region, we have positive. 95% of the time, it alternates signs between positive and negative. But there's always those times when it doesn't, so you still have to test your points. All right, so that means it is increasing where the derivative 
is positive. So that's from negative infinity to negative 2 and from 0 to infinity. And it's decreasing where the derivative is negative. And that would be from negative 2 to 0. So that tells you the graph kind of goes up, then down, and then up. You might look at it on a graphing calculator and see how that corresponds. Okay, same process. Take the derivative, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. Okay, then I'm going to put those numbers on a number line. And I'm going to test my regions. Again, I have three of them. So I'm going to take 4, uh, 1, and negative 1. And again, you can choose any number within those regions. And then you're going to evaluate the derivative at your test points and see if that derivative is negative or positive. Right, I'm not cranking up my calculator. So notice, as I just said, that it usually alternates in signs. This one does not. Right? So let's see, from, from 3 to infinity, or greater than 3, we have positive. Right? Bet then our next test point gave us a negative value. And our next test point gave us another negative value. So it does not alternate in sign. That means somehow this graph goes down, down, and then up. So it is increasing where it's positive. So that would be from 3 to infinity. But it's decreasing from negative infinity to 0, and then 0 to 3. You cannot Again, you cannot include that 0 because that's where the derivative equals to 0. It is not decreasing there. Let's see what, we ha what happens when we have a quotient rule, something a little bit different. All right, we're going to still find the derivative. Right, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Okay, so we have an interesting derivative. That is never going to equal to 0. So if I set this equal to 0 and try to solve for x, let me just show you the algebra. If I cross multiplied, that's what happens. And think about it, if you go back to this fraction, the only time a fraction can equal to 0 is if the numerator is 0. And that numerator is always going to be negative 1. So how am I going to find out if it's increasing or decreasing? Well, not only do you have to find out where the derivative equals to 0, we also have to look at where is the derivative undefined. And the only time this is really going to come up is uh, when you have a fraction. And so go back to the domain that you cannot divide by 0. So x minus 1 can't be 0, so x can't be 1. So that's where the derivative would be undefined. That's where the function is undefined. And if you recall, that's where you have vertical asymptotes. Right? So I'm just going to have one number to test. Well, I'm going to have one number on my number line, and I'm going to have two regions to test. So I'm going to pick a number above 1 and below 1. And again, I'm going to evaluate that derivative. That's negative. That's negative. So that means this function is decreasing everywhere except at 1. So we go from negative infinity to 1, and then 1 to infinity. The function was undefined at 1. The derivative is undefined at 1. And so it cannot be increasing nor decreasing at 1. All right, let's look and see what happens when we have um, a 3 fifths power. So taking the derivative, all right, if I set that equal to 0, well, let's remember, let's put our negative exponents in the bottom. Now this is going to be the same thing that we just talked about. That is never going to be 0 because it's a fraction, and the only time a fraction is equal to 0 is if the numerator equals to 0. However, it is undefined when x is equal to 0 because x is in the denominator. Not, if you set that equal to 0, you would get 0. So again, I'm going to put 0 on my number line pick something to the right and something to the left and evaluate that derivative. So I have 3 over 5. Let's see. That's 
Um, that should be a five here. Sorry about that. Is that correct? So that means the fifth root of x squared. So that's 3 over 5 times the fifth root of 1. That's all positive. I don't know if that equals 2, but I don't see any negatives. Okay, if I square negative 1, I'm going to get a positive. So this function is increasing all the time except at the value of 0. So we would be increasing from negative infinity to 0 and then 0 to infinity. So what you want to make sure you look at is change negative exponents to positive exponents because that's usually where you're going to get some undefined values.